with Staff Sergeant Carol Joe. Today, we take a look at the music performed in one of the most recognizable buildings in the world, the White House. Musicians have served at the White House throughout its history, not only entertaining presidents, but also performing an important diplomatic role of inspiring leaders from around the world. We are so excited to be joined by historian Jennifer Pickens, author of Entertaining at the White House. Ms. Pickens, thank you for joining us today. Hello, Staff Sergeant Joe. Thank you so much for having me today. It is an honor to be here with you. Music has played such an important role at the White House, from state visits to our annual traditions, to more unique celebrations, and even for private moments of our first families. Music is an important part of the story of the White House. Since the days of the Hoover administration, music for harp has been present at the White House. President and Mrs. Hoover were the first to ask an artist to perform for a head of state, inviting harpist Mildred Dilling to play for the King of Siam on April 29, 1931. Mrs. Dilling was often referred to as the First Lady of the Harp, and during her career performed for five U.S. presidents. To this day, the harp remains a vital part of musical life at the White House. First Lady did more to enhance entertain at the White House than First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. And music was certainly part of that achievement. She changed the way we received visiting heads of state. Rather than receiving them at the airport, she designed the wonderful arrival ceremony we now know today on the South Lawn of the White House. She began to use the White House as a stage for the performing arts as a fabulous backdrop to usher in a new era of sophistication to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. From seasoned, world-renowned artists to the up-and-coming ones, to large-scale performances such as Copeland's Billy the Kid Ballet, to more intimate musical performances such as the one by Pablo Casal.
loveliness in the U.S. Army Sterling Stratons, I've gotten to play a lot of amazing places and to support many significant historical events. But the White House really has a special place in my heart. Every time I go there, it's always such an honor. I think about the history that's there, all of the amazing performers and artists that have performed there as well. And it's just so neat to see how music just brings people together. Continuing President and Mrs. Trump's desire to highlight the U.S. military in as many ways as possible at all White House events, the entertainment for the evening was the largest gathering ever of premier military musicians for a state dinner at the executive residence. It featured over 150 members from choral and musical groups in the United States Army, Marine Corps, Navy, and Air Force that included the President's own United States Marine Chamber Orchestra, the United States Army Chorus, the United States Army Herald Trumpets, the United States Army Strings, the United States Navy Band Sea Chanters, the United States Air Force Strings, and the United States Air Force Singing Sergeants. The soaring voices surrounded the dinner guests entirely from all sides and at every level. The talented members of the military set their stage on the roof of the Rose Garden along the West Colonnade and along the outer edges of the garden. And it truly was spectacular. I wanted to share with you all for just a moment and this wonderful video and sat, it is off of an iPhone from not standing there, but it just gives you a sense of how amazing this moment was. One piece of music that has inspired our nation for generations is the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Written by Julia Ward Howe during the Civil War as a pro-Union, anti-slavery anthem, the Battle Hymn of the Republic has grown to become an anthem that unites all Americans. Today, we salute the chorus, the members of Pershing's own, and all military musicians who faithfully serve and inspire our leadership at the White House. Oh. 